Rabbi, so you go by Rabbi Block, correct? Rabbi Block. Rabbi uh, Chaim Block. C H A I M is my first name. L'chaim. L'chaim means to life. Oh, beautiful. I like that. Well, thank you so and, much for uh, being with me today. I, I am the, uh, the uh, senior rabbi at the Chabad Center in San Antonio, Texas. All righty. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about the historical significance of Hanukkah. So could you elaborate it on its significance and its message of freedom from oppression and tyranny? Uh, you did your homework. I like that. <laughs> thank so, you. So um, Hanukkah takes place during the time of the Second Temple Era, which essentially is 165 BCE. And um, the Judea or the or the, uh, the the land of Israel was then under the rule of a Syrian Greek king. And we mean a Syrian Greek king because um, it was a confluence of the Syrian and uh, Greek dynasties that came together after Alexander the Great uh, passed away. His empire devolved into four separate sub empires with his generals taking over his four generals taking over each one of them uh, another segment of his empire and the uh, Judea was at the crossroads Israel's at the crossroads between Egypt and Syria mm -hmm. so it was constantly being fought over and battled over um, and the Jewish people did not have political independence for a large time during the second temple they were ruled by various different uh greater powers in this particular time it was a syrian greek rule that was presided over by a king named antiochus mm -hmm. and uh he um decided that he wanted to unite his um, kingdom under one religion, his pagan idol idolatrous religion. Uh, and uh, uh, most of the indigenous peoples under his rule uh, acquiesced what's the difference between one idol worship versus another. Mm -hmm. And it was the Jewish people who were um, the carriers and the bearers of monotheism uh, refused to give up their worship of their God and and the sanctity of the temple. And, and uh, as a result, there was a, 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 lot of, a lot of conflict and a lot of tension between Antiochus and the Jewish people uh, to, the, to the extent that he decided to ruthlessly force the Jewish people away from Judaism, outlawed the practice of uh, Judaism, the study of the Torah, some of the basic traditions such as the Sabbath and the laws of uh, circumcision and the laws of uh, establishing the calendar according to the moon and many, many others uh, were outlawed. And he actually defiled the temple, which was something that was very, very painful for the Jewish people and brought in all kinds of idols and graven images and unclean animals and so on and so forth and for a while there was nothing the jewish people could do um what sparked the revolt was an elderly high priest named matityahu otherwise known as matathias um, he lived in the city of modi'in and uh a greek officer appeared and gathered the jews together and forced one of the Jews to offer a swine to some idolatrous deity. He was infuriated. He killed the officer and thus sparked the revolt. And it was a small band that went, ran into the hills and slowly the clarion call came is that we need a fight, not for our political independence, but for our religious freedom. It wasn't political independence that inspired the revolt like most revolts today. It was the right to practice freely without coercion and without uh, persecution, one's beliefs. And so the miracle as it is recorded uh, in Jewish history and in the Talmud was a small band 
of of zealots, of fighters, managed to um, push back the superpower of the time to the point where they were able to uh, rededicate the temple. They didn't even achieve a political independence at that war. It came much later. But this was about religious freedom. So Jerusalem was liberated. The temple area was liberated. And they came into the temple and they um, wanted to light the candelabra, which was one of the symbols of the temple. The symbol of light, the symbol of warmth, the symbol of love and, and um, spirituality. And they couldn't find any oil, clean oil, to light the menorah with. And another miracle that they found after a lot of searching, one flask of oil that was enough only to light for one day. Now, what do you do if you have a flask of oil that is only going to last for one day, but it would take eight to manufacture and produce new oil? Do you just wait until you have the new oil so you can light it without interruption? Or do you put the oil in, it's going to go out, and then you're going to have seven days left to wait. So the Jewish people decided that they're going to put the oil in, and they're going to use the earliest opportunity to bring light back into their world. And whatever God decides will happen. If they have to wait another seven days, they will. They weren't even expecting this miracle. They were expecting it to go out. And according to tradition, the first day passes and the lights are not going out. So they thought, you know, hey, maybe there's, uh, you know, conditions, weather conditions allow the oil to last a little longer. But then the second day comes and the oil is still not going out. And the third and the fourth and the news spreads like wildfire. And all the Jews are coming from near and far to see and watch this miracle in front of their eyes. And it burns and burns and burns until more new oil is able to be brought to continue lighting the menorah without interruption. That is what inspired the rabbis to establish these days as days of commemoration, as days of rejoicing, as days of gathering uh, in commemoration of this miracle. And the way we celebrate Hanukkah is by lighting the menorah by lighting the candles. Every day we add another light. Every day we, we celebrate and we're not uh, satisfied with the light that we had yesterday because today's a new day. Today we need new light. Today we need another spirit, another surge of, of energy. And so uh, what, what's so significant is that We've won quite a few battles in the course of our history. We don't have celebrations for those battles. I myself don't even know all the dates of when the Jewish people won their little battles throughout our history. But this time it was different. This time there was a light component. There was a spirituality component. And what the rabbis were celebrating was not the war, not the miracle on the battlefield, which was perhaps more significant. More lives were saved. And we are probably here today because of the victory of that war. But that's not what we're celebrating. Right. Because we don't glorify war. War is a necessary evil to maintain peace and to maintain security if you need to. But no one's going into war just for the fun of it or just to impose our will on other people. We are celebrating the miracle of the lights because... A, a, a human being is about adding a little light to the world because they are here. And when, when, every, when I, it's, it's a beautiful thought, but it's, it's so powerful that every time a new baby is born, is God saying that this world cannot exist without this person, without the contribution and the light and the, the love of that, of that individual. And so what we're celebrating today is the power of light over might, the power of the spirit over the material, the power of people to come together for a common cause and dedicate themselves to a higher purpose. And that is really what the miracle of Hanukkah is all about.
Rabbi, that's actually, uh, you kind of answered my next question. My next question was going to be, what role do community events play in, you know, fostering a sense of unity and celebration during Hanukkah? And you into that right off the bat. So um, I guess I got to ask you the next question. And um, given the climate of our political nature or the, the nature of our political climate right now, how is Hanukkah kind of bringing the Jewish community closer? Well, uh, I think Hanukkah, is um, has come so is in such a timely way, um, and it has further strengthened the unity of the Jewish people uh, as a result of the events of October seventh and the Hamas uh, massacre of so many innocent civilians. That event has has brought the Jewish community together like no other event in my uh, memory. Um, the awareness that the hate is so intense and the cruelty, the cruelty and brutality was so off the charts that right, left, center, you know, Jews like to argue. I mean, we have lots of ideas and we're very set in our ideas and you know like any like any uh political like like our country our country is very polarized right now uh left right and, and so on and so forth hard right hard left you have the same in the jewish community but when someone attacks your family because the jewish people are like one big family in a sense and um, when someone, it's not just an attack on one part of the family, it's an attack on the Jewish people because they state clearly that their goal is to kill Jews. That means me. That means everyone, if they could, if they were able to, that's what they would do. That's what they teach their children in kindergarten. And so that has coalesced us as a people. But then comes Hanukkah. And reminds us that you don't fight hate with hate. You don't fight brutality with with anger. You you fight hate with light and with love, especially as it relates to between us and between and amongst the rest of the world. And 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 actually, as as many as those demonstrations of allegiance to to Hamas that are all over the country, in San Antonio, in places literally all over the world, as much as you're seeing those demonstrations of support for terror and brutality and hate, most of us don't ascribe to those ideas. And we are so grateful to our communities here in Texas, and especially in San Antonio, that's where I live, and I'm sure in, in Victoria, um, where most people are very supportive. And wherever I go, people are reaching out to express their support. So this country is essentially a country of moral and upright and, and, and wonderful people who really get it, except not as vocal. Maybe they're not marching in the streets. So um, it's about, and, and I really believe that humanity is one big family in a sense. So there's brothers, siblings, and cousins, and second cousins, and third cousins, but it, it's basically, we're all in this one big family of humanity, children of God, and we all have a spark, uh, a, 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 a soul that is, that is connected to our creator that unites us, and that's really what we need to be focusing on, and this is what Hanukkah reminds us of, that there's more to light than there is to darkness. Darkness is just the absence of light. And when you light one candle, you can banish a room full of darkness. You just have to remember to, to light those candles. And it's not always that easy. Well, Rabbi, thank you so much. I do, I feel like we could talk about this for another hour, but I do have another interview at 9.45. Um, so is there any last remarks you would like to leave with? That's fine. You can work with that. <laughs> no, you did it amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time for with me today and sorry those technical difficulties, but thank you so much.